Hello, my name's Louise Yates and I am the author and illustrator of Dog Loves Books, Dog Loves Drawing, Dog Loves Counting and Dog Loves Fairy Tales. And today I'm going to read Dog Loves Drawing and I have two friends here with me. This is Mr Dudley and this is Ticket and um, hopefully one of them will sit still the whole way through and we'll see which one. Dog Loves Drawing Dog loved books. He loved books so much that he had opened his own bookshop. When he wasn't sharing books with others, Dog was reading them himself. One morning, a parcel arrived. Inside was a book, but as Dog opened it up, he saw to his surprise that it had no words and no pictures. How curious, he thought. Just inside the cover, he noticed a message from his Aunt Dora that read, To my dearest dog, may the lines you draw open a door to some wonderful adventures. With love from your Aunt Dora. It was a sketchbook. Dog knew exactly what to do. He pulled out his pens, laid out his br brushes, sharpened his pencils, took a deep breath and drew a door. He stepped through it and on the empty page in front of him, Dog drew a stick man. Hello, said the stick man. Hello, said Dog. I'm not sure what else to draw. Let's doodle, suggested the stick man. That's the best way to come up with ideas. So that is what they did. Then they turned the page together. It would be even more fun if there were others to join in, said Dog. So Dog drew a duck and the duck drew an owl and the owl drew a crab and the crab did some colouring in. Soon they were all spilling onto the next page. What now? they wondered. Let's go on an outing, hooted the owl. So Dog drew a train and they all climbed aboard. While the duck was arguing with the others about who should drive, the stick man drew himself a driver's hat scribbled some steam and they were off. The scenery streaked past them. They were travelling so fast. At last, the stick man drew the train to a stop. Dog got out and drew a boat while the crab scribbled some sea. They climbed aboard, all except the crab who clung on to the side. The stick man drew some sandwiches because he was very hungry. The owl copied the sandwiches because she was hungry too. And the duck drew an enormous cake because he was the hungriest of them all. Dog coloured in a cloudless sky and they drifted. The boat drifted a long way before land appeared. They all got out and stretched their legs. The crab drew a parasol to protect himself from the sun. Then the duck decided to draw a monster. And that spoiled everything. The monster chased them all the way around the island and on to the next page. Then Dog had a brilliant idea. He quickly drew a door and leapt through it. On the other side, he found himself back in the bookshop. He turned the last page of his sketchbook and made sure that his friends were safe and that the monster could not escape. Then he dashed out to buy some more paper. Dog loves drawing and the very next thing he drew was a thank you card for his Aunt Dora. That's the end. I think that Books are a bit like a door. You open them up and you have some wonderful adventures. And I hope you're having wonderful adventures in books at the moment. And um, perhaps you might like to try drawing like Dog did and have some adventures that way. Thank you again. Goodbye.
everyone. Um, I'm the author and illustrator of Dog Loves Books and the, the Dog Loves series and um, today I'm going to draw Dog for you. I thought I'd draw him quickly to start off with just to show you um, how, how I would draw him uh, without sort of thinking too much about it because um, I've drawn him quite a lot now. Um, he is based on a Jack Russell uh, dog, um, but he's obviously been tweaked a bit to make him more human, so he's somewhere between a Jack Russell and a human toddler, um, and he's quite fluffy, and he loves reading. drawn the book a bit high up there so he's sort of got it in the crook of his elbow and there's his little thumb and he's got sort of furry paws and the rest of the book would come down there and there's his arm he's got quite a little fat tongue and we have some pages on the book like this and if you stick out there it's a big book he's a small dog mm. there we go and then we'd see his legs probably coming out the bottom here somewhere, fluffy toes, um, this little one, and what we often see as well is his tail coming up, up. and um, I generally draw him with two kinds of eyes, one is um, an eye like this, which is my favourite one in a way, because that's mm, him reading, and um, looking down and I think it's something that we do when we go into our imagination. We tend to stop using our eyes that see the world and we start using the eye in our mind and we go and see things that we might not be able to see in real life. And, uh, and so that's what Dog's doing when he's reading. And really, um, Dog is sort of the spirit of reading. And um, people say that Dog's a man's best friend. and I think that books are also man's best friend, They're very, very good companions to us. Um, so that's him drawn quickly, and then I'll just show you, I'll break it down slowly so that you might like to have a try at home. Um, so when I'm drawing him, I think what I imagine is a circle, and his neck, and then a sort of oval, and his ears are really triangles joined onto the circle and his nose is a shape that I can't describe um, and then he's got his arms and his legs and his tail so if I draw that on the paper here um, here's the circle of his head here's his neck and here's his oval shaped body and he's got a lovely fat tummy and a little scoop in the back of his uh, back there um, and there's his tail and his arms I won't draw him holding a book just to make it simpler his arms and his legs so on top of that I'll draw oh I haven't done his ears so they would be a triangle up there sort of flappy pointy triangle you have to imagine them hovering over the top of his head. Here's the top of his head and that's joined on to the top of his head like that and then his nose will come out here. I suppose it's something like a little half circle followed by a bigger circle. There's his smile and then another sort of scoop like this and if I start to sort of join him up you'll see I go over that um, and then bearing in mind that he's hairy we sort of have to do some fluff fluffy bits some smooth bits where he's brushed his fur maybe and some less fluffy bits um, more fluffy bits rather there we go and there there's his neck 
um, he has a sort of little fluffy chest like a Jack Russell dog and his paws hanging by his side and his tummy would come in front of that arm or paw but this arm would come in front of his tummy because we're sort of standing on this side of him so we'd see this arm but his belly would get in the way of that arm so that's how I imagine that and there's his other arm his tail and this is the other eye that I do this is dog ready for action ever alert and curious and ready for adventure um, and really once you've got the those shapes you can think about dog doing all sorts of the things that he loves so I was going to try and draw him um, standing upside down I draw the oval first of his body and his head would be underneath because he's upside down. Um, that head looks a bit small actually, could a bit bigger. He's got quite childlike proportions and babies and children have um, much bigger heads in proportion to their bodies in comparison to adults. And he's, we're going to be looking at him from behind a little bit. So his tail would be here. Let's draw those legs waving in the air. And I think his paws would be coming down to steady him. And his ears would be sort of flattened under his head. So we won't draw those triangles. We draw them sort of under his head. Um, so now what I would draw are his feet. And they waving in the air. His tail. And the scoop of his back. And his one paw would go behind his head. And maybe his fur would be falling because of gravity. It'd be almost sort of falling the other way. One ear, two ears. And this paw would come in front of his nose. And maybe he's got his paw there with his hand. It's hard to see what's going on, isn't it? And like that. And like this. And then his face would be here, and he might have um, little smiles, maybe upside down smiles. Can you just about see his eye? It's maybe just about there. <laughs> He's upside down, standing on his head. Um, when I do the books, I do lots and lots of sketches and practice drawings and I draw them over and over and over again. And um, I'm often trying to make him look as real and um, three-dimensional as possible. And one other thing that I wanted to show you is just that the way that I use shadow often to think about something as um, being a solid thing rather than a flat thing on a piece of paper. And I just think about where the light falls. So if I'm imagining now the light is shining on dog. If you imagine a spotlight coming from this direction, it would cast a shadow on this side. And that's the thing that makes us know that something's solid and substantial. So uh, his arm would be dark. And his book would be a little bit casting a shadow down. And he'd be casting a shadow out behind him. Like this. There. That just gives a feeling of him being in the world with us. Rather than a flat drawing on a page. And I do the same with the others. So if I imagine the light coming again in this direction, um, one ear and the other, and down the arm, and um, I might like to try drawing dog, but 
also once you've got the um, circle and the oval as a sort of body shape you might draw all sorts of characters you can have use that shape for a, a human um, especially if it's those similar proportions it's a sort of childlike proportion if you wanted to draw an adult you'd draw the head a bit smaller and the body a bit longer in comparison and the arms and the legs longer and there we go thank you for listening happy drawing Bye-bye.